Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rico Richardson and the goal of this channel is to help you guys edit your photos and your videos professionally but for free. And in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to create a black and white photo using Darktable 3.0.1. Let's go. Alright, and this is the image that we're going to work with. I've put all the modules in my favorites over here. And if you don't have them in your favorites just yet, you can find them over here. Or you can go to more modules and then find them in a the list down below. Click it and then it'll pop up in your favorites menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tone equalizer. So I'm going to activate that one. I'm going to play around with some of the exposures in this image. And if I move my mouse around this image, it shows you where it is. So right now it's minus 2.2. Uh, we've got some blacks over here, minus 2.7. The reds are 2.4, maybe his face 2.4. And then if we check out the board, which is a little bit more dark, it says minus 3.6. So that means that if I want to adjust those areas, I have to check and see which one is closest to those values and then change them accordingly. Since this isn't a very dark image, I'm going to focus on minus two, minus three and minus four. So let's just increase this a little bit and you see what's happening. The midtones or the minus two exposure is getting a little bit more bright. I'm going to do the same thing for the minus three. And I'm going to do the same thing for the minus four. I'm going to bump this up quite a bit. There we go. And even though the image still looks a little bit flat, we'll change that in a minute. I'm going to keep this. There you go. So now the image is a little bit more bright. I kind of like how this looks. So I'm going to keep the tone equalizer as is. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to use the tone curve module to get some contrast because it's a very flat image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some contrast into this image to make sure that it really pops. I'm going to bring out the highlights some more. Not too much. There you go. So that looks a lot better. Let me show you guys before and after. So Here's the image without the tone curve module activated. And here's the image with the tone curve module activated. And it's already popping a lot more than it was. Now what I want to do is I want to color correct it a little bit. And for that, I'm going to use the color corrections module. I'm going to activate that one. And this little white dot is where the highlights are. And this little black dot is where the shadows are. So I'm going to put the shadows into the blues a little bit and I'm going to put the highlights into the orange a little bit. Just make sure that you do this very, very subtly. Otherwise the changes will be very, very noticeable. Let me show you guys. So here's a before. The water is a little bit more brown. And now if I activate it, there's a little bit more blue to it. And I just like how this looks. So we're going to move on to the next module, which is the basic corrections one, because I want to change some basic things around. For instance, I'm going to increase the black point a little bit. I'm going to keep the exposure as is, and I want to increase the saturation by 10. I'm just scrolling the mouse wheel button away from you guys. If you scroll it towards you, it becomes less. So I'm going to put this on 0.10. You can hit the right mouse button and then fill it in manually as well. I'm going to keep the vibrance as is, and as you see, I'm going to show you guys, here's a before, here's an after. It's very subtle, but especially the reds are popping a little bit more. If you add some contrast to this image by dropping the shadows, increasing the midtones and the highlights, and you're increasing the saturation as well, you will notice that the flatness of the image is going away and it really is starting to stand out. So basically, now we've done the color correction of the image. We made it as we want it to be. And from here on, I'm going to make it black and white. Let me show you guys how. So for that, I'm going to activate the channel mixer and I'm going to make sure that the destination is set to gray. So it's probably set to saturation for you or, or maybe even red when you open it, but just make sure you put it on gray. And now I'm just going to move the sliders around and watch what happens. If I, if I start to move this, the image starts to change. So I'm going to increase this till about here. I'm going to do the same thing for the greens to really open them up. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for the blues. So now we have a customized black and white image. I want to crop and rotate it right now. So I'm only going to crop it, but I'm going to make sure that automatic cropping is set to yes. And I'm going to change the aspect ratio from freehand to four by five. I've already had it set to four by five, but usually when you use this for the first time, it's set to freehand. So let's change it to four by five, which is the uh, Instagram aspect ratio. 
And now I'm just going to drop this down and I want to make sure that I still use the rule of thirds. So I'm going to place it. There we go. So now he's on this side of the image. I'm going to double click it. And now the image has been cropped. I see a little bit of softness around his face. So I'm going to counteract that by activating the sharpen module. And there we go. Here's the end result. And let me show you guys one more time. So here's the image that we started with. It's very dull. It's very flat. This is how it's imported into Darktable. Don't forget though, usually the base curve is activated as well, but I've set it to orientation and then I hit compress history stack. So that's my starting point. And here we have the image after we've applied all the corrections to it. And after we've applied the channel mixer to it to make it black and white. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this photo, what you think of this tutorial. I'd love to hear it. I had a lot of fun making this photo because I went to the beach. It was nice weather. It was very windy, but I knew that the wind was going inland. And that's usually when kite surfers are starting to come out and kite surf the entire afternoon. Because if the wind is going from land so into the sea that means they can drift away and it's harder to get back on shore uh, i made sure to get my uh, 35 to 100 millimeters mark 2 lens for the panasonic g80 that's the camera that i've brought with me i've shot this image on a 1 to 2500 shutter speed and f 2.8 I made sure that the ISO was 200 and the focal length of this image is 100 millimeters. If you guys got any questions about that, let me know in the comment section down below as well. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop in a video. And until next time, doei!